Well, folks, welcome to the Let Your Heart Not Be Troubled Bible Prophecy Conference of Lamb and Lion Ministries. I'm here with Dr. Dave Bowen, and he and I are evangelists here at Lamb and Lion Ministries. We're so blessed and honored to have uh, a tremendous scholar, a tremendous pastor. You all know Dr. Erwin Lutzer has joined us. He's one of our featured speakers at this conference. And we're going to take a few minutes as Dr. Lutzer shares something on his heart about the fact that eventually all of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So Dr. Lutzer, teach us about that, because I think a lot of people think that we're just going to walk into heaven and, and that'll be that. But it's not that simple, right? You know, I take the judgment seat of Jesus Christ very, very seriously. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, For we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the deeds done in the body, whether good or evil. Mm -hmm. Think about that, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a couple of things we have to know. Number one, obviously, we are going to be judged fairly because our judge mm -hmm. is going to be Jesus Christ. The one who died for us is now going to judge us. But also... We'll be judged individually. Paul says, for example, in the book of Romans, he says, why do you judge one another? For each one of us shall give an account right. of himself to God. In fact, it says that in the verse I just quoted. Every one of us shall give an account. And then third, and this is the controversy that I'm willing to discuss with uh, you men. I believe we are going to be judged thoroughly. What Paul says there is, we shall be judged for the deeds done in the body, whether good or bad, mm -hmm. okay? Now, it also says in 1 Corinthians 3, where it says that our works are going to be tried with fire, it says that every man's work is going to be manifest. Every man's work. Now, naturally, the question that people have is, are we going to see our sin? I've thought about that a lot, and... Uh, I would say this, that if we do see it, it will be, we'll see it as forgiven because mm. this is not a time when we have to pay for our sin or even be disciplined for our sin per se, because all that has been taken care of at the cross. Mm -hmm. But it will be an evaluation. Now, Dave, I'm going to give you an example of the way in which I think of it. Let's suppose that your whole life, and we'll take you, Dave, mm -hmm. as an example, okay. your whole life is taken and everything that you've done since your conversion is either gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, stubble. Correct. All right. Now, think of it as being turned into gold, silver, precious stones. Then it's lit. You will not see your sin, but you will see how well you did, and you'll see what survives the fire. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, we hear about it being burned up, the... The yeah. thing that were not fruitful to the Lord, but what survives and, and when it survives, what does that mean survive into the eternity? How, what, what form is it? Before you answer that, though, because I think what people need to understand is as a pastor, I hear people say all the time, I ask, if you died today, would you go to heaven? Yes, I would. How do you know I'm a good person? <laughs> and they, oh, think yeah. those think that, they think those good works would be what's the gold and silver oh, yeah. and would get them there. But we don't get into heaven based on No, works. and yeah. to explain that, and even to bring up the judgment seat, it's hard for them to imagine. I'm glad that you pointed that out. I didn't realize how this could all be misunderstood. Yes. So to all those who are listening, let me be very clear about this. Your works contribute nothing to your salvation. Let me tell you what your contribution to your salvation is. Your contribution is your sin. God's contribution is all that Jesus did on the cross in paying for the debt of all who believe on him. So your contribution, you have nothing to bring. You remember that song, nothing in my hands I bring, but simply to thy cross I cling. <laughs> so if you've never savingly believed, this would be the opportunity to repent of your sin yes. and to believe on Christ. Now to your question, and we have to hurry. Okay, because so now we're saved. The only work that we have in our lives that matters is the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We're dead. We're standing before the throne of God. He judges us. It's called the Bema Seat. The, the works of our life are burned up. We've got gold, silver, and precious metal. What is that? Even ask me. All right. <laughs> now, the way we know what survives the fire is that if we look at the New Testament, we discover that there are about 12 different statements 
in the Bible that help us know what survives. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you all 12, but I'll give you several of them. And then those who are listening can actually do their own study yes. to find out what the others yes. are. For example, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. For great shall be your reward in heaven. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's another one. Love your enemies because then you'll be like God who sh uh, shines sunshine on the righteous and the unrighteous, rain on the righteous mm -hmm. and the unrighteous. And he says, if you do that, great will be your reward in heaven. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking to somebody there. Do you have somebody in your life who's really quite impossible? There are tons of impossible people. Well, if you do them good and love them, you have a reward waiting for you at the judgment seat of Christ. Now also, things like hospitality. Jesus said, if you're gonna throw a feast, don't get all the same people who are there all the time and they already know all your jokes. Rather, go out into the highways and byways, get the lame and the blind people who can't pay you back, and David. He said, you will be repaid mm -hmm. at the resurrection mm -hmm. of the just. So don't give me this business of self-righteous people. Oh, you know, isn't it selfish to serve God for rewards? No, not at all. Because here's the deal. When we are well rewarded, it's because we have pleased Christ. Amen. Amen. So you can do your own study or... You can buy a book that I've written entitled <laughs> <laughs> Your Eternal Reward, Triumph and Tears at the Judgment Seat of Jesus Christ. Can they find out <clears throat> about the crowns in that book? Oh, yes, I have a, a chapter on crowns as well. Excellent. Excellent. And, you know, if I might speak very generally about the crowns, the Bible says that, you know, and then you have these self-righteous people saying, well, what difference does it make if I have crowns? Uh, we're just going to throw them before the feet of Jesus anyway. Yeah, but if you do, David, you're going to have to pick them up. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end, it says that we reign with Christ forever and ever. So... There are various crowns, you know, the crown of glory, the crown, crown of, of righteousness, righteousness and Four so days forth. return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and those I, who look for Christ. I, I like return. to talk to people and to bring this picture up and try to get them there almost in a three-dimensional way when we do go face-to-face -face with Christ. And how will you respond if, you, if you're looking into his eyes and he said, did I ever ask too much of you? Wow. You know, how do you say, yes, you want it too much from me, knowing all that he's done and trying to get people to understand that picture of his love, I love for that. us? I love that. Have I asked too much of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. really a good question. Could I end with an illustration? Sir. Yes, sure. In India, there is a parable about a very wealthy man who was riding along, a Raja in a beautiful chariot. And there was a beggar mm. standing on the side of the road. And the beggar thought, I wonder if he would stop and give me something. So the beggar held out his bowl of rice. To his shock, the Raja got off of the chariot and came back and said, beggar, give me some of your rice. Mm. Well, the beggar was mad. This rich guy asking me for some of my rice. And so he took a, he took a kernel of um, rice and gave it to the wealthy Raja. Raja, give me more of your rice. The beggar was furious. He gave him another grain of rice. And then he said, beggar, give me more of your rice. By now, the beggar is just ready to be tied. He's so <laughs> angry, he gives him one more grain of rice and walks off. The Raja gets on his chariot and leaves. As the beggar walks along and looks in his bowl, he notices something glitter. Oh, mm -hmm. A grain of gold the size of a grain of rice, just three. Oh. Had he given more? If I had known, yes. wow. I'd given him my entire bowl of rice. And I say to all those who are listening today, Jesus is very generous. He wants to bless you. He wants to reward you as a believer at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And what he's asking for is our rice 
for his gold. <laughs>